Welcome back. Title IX is something that has repeatedly cropped up over the years. It is a very basic right that is being ignored by many colleges in America. So first of all, I think we should explain what Title IX is. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Which is truly fascinating as many colleges are guilty of breaching this. Colleges that have denied and accused students their due process or punished them without so much as a hearing. First of all, let's establish a few things colleges or universities should not be doing, along with what the government should not be doing either. Yes, this means we will address the rescinded Dear Colleague letter penned during the Obama administration. 1. Colleges should not be prosecuting those accused of sexual assault by some kind of campus law. It is a criminal charge and should therefore be escalated to the correct law enforcement. You, the campus, are not the law. I am the law. 2. Colleges should not be denying individuals their due process rights, as this directly undermines Title IX. One could argue that if a campus is denying rights, that they might have their own guidelines that they operate under, to which I must simply reply with, all criminal charges must be taken to law enforcement, and the colleges need to stop overstepping their marks and overstating what limited powers they truly have. Okay. 3. Defendants are innocent until proven guilty. So pushing the idea that a claimed attacker is guilty, coupling that with denying them their very basic human rights, is a violation that should never be crossed. 4. As serious as the charges of rape are, so are those of falsely accusing someone. This needs to be added as there is someone that we will talk about later who managed to obtain a degree with a project about their falsified rape. And finally, 5. The Obama administration penned a letter that has been declared a significant guidance document. Now with this being rescinded, this should be ignored for future reference, as it was never meant to be linked with the original meaning of Title IX to begin with. It was an overreach of the Obama administration's powers, because Obama loved them civil rights. So now I think it's important to quickly go through the most well-known cases just to highlight how a college has violated a student's rights and ignored law to push an obvious agenda. We will start with the most well-known and work our way to present. Emma Solkowitz. She got her degree with an art piece where she carried her mattress around the campus all the time, including at her graduation. What makes me chuckle is that the college had to issue an apology, kind of, to Paul Nungesser, the real victim of all of this, and award him a sizable amount of compensation. So I have to ask, was it really worth it, Columbia? You lost money, credibility, and gave a degree to a false rape claimer that could have ruined a life, and is now touring the country doing interpretive art with BDSM. How classy. Now it should be stated that the police were involved and took it no further after the evidence showed that she was horny and he did not rape her in the booty like she wanted. Small interjection to make a controversial point, I'm in favour of due process. Shocking, I know. Next up, the Rolling Stones article on the frat house that supposedly gang raped a girl called Jackie. College responded by suspending fraternities. Now let's skip to present, and a magazine removed the article, got sued by the former dean for faking images, and the frat got over $1 million in a settlement. Journalistic integrity, zero. College integrity, zero. Justice, two. Let's move ahead to a more recent incident, where the University of Southern California attempted to threaten the non-victim when she made it clear that her boyfriend, a football player at the time, did not beat her up as they had claimed the university overstepped its mark to the point where they suspended the student, done by the Title IX investigator, before he was even interviewed about claims of assault. This all loosely resembles that of the lawsuit against Colorado State University Pueblo by athlete Grant Neal, who was found responsible for rape after his girlfriend, an athletic staffer, said their sex was consensual. The university has recently settled with Neil, hardly a shock, as it was consensual sex, you dunderheads, and he didn't have sex with the college, so why was the college the one making the claims in the first place? Now let's move on to one that is truly disgusting, where a disabled student was raped by a female student who had initially claimed that he raped her, only for Drake University to expel him. This has managed to get to the place where Drake University is now getting sued for it. Shocking. Judge Ibinga said that Rossley Jr.'s Title IX claim against Drake and the trustees can proceed because contrary to the university's argument, he did not specifically plead a disparate impact claim, but rather intentional discrimination in violation of Title IX. 
the school's lawyers conceded at a May hearing that Rosley Jr., an American citizen of Hispanic descent born in Costa Rica, could pursue and has alleged other theories in support of his Title IX claim against the university and board, according to the judge. So now I've made my point that colleges are truly guilty of violating Title IX. Let's move on to the more recent DeVos statement and also onto a piece from Georgia. Students in the university system of Georgia institutions are getting more due process protections in campus sexual assault proceedings following recent legislative attempts to protect the wrongly accused. Representative Earl Earhart, the chairman of the Higher Education Appropriations Subcommittee, has been involved in due process for students after he threatened Georgia Tech for suspending a fraternity based on an allegation of a racial slur. He also introduced failed legislation that would have required Georgia colleges to report sexual assault allegations to police, which they should do immediately anyway. They are not a separate nation and must abide the country's laws. Do I need to play a clip of Judge Dredd here or something? He did manage to get the bill through, but with a piece removed and I'm going to read it. However, no disciplinary proceedings based upon an alleged sexual assault shall be conducted by a post-secondary institution without the participation of the victim of such alleged sexual assault. Which basically means colleges could still punish accused students if their accusers refuse to participate in the proceeding. Can you imagine just how much of a dick someone could be with this power? If they know they faked it, but the college has gone ahead as if they're telling the truth. No, Lena, not all women tell the truth about rape. Then the victim can truly screw with someone and have their education and future ruined. Now, DeVos recently gave a statement about all of this and stated that the current system imposes a broken system which mistreats both accused students and rape survivors. The Obama-era Office for Civil Rights compelled universities to design sexual assault adjudication policies that have deprived students of due process rights and weakened protections for freedom of expression. DeVos has taken some rather nasty criticism for either being massively underqualified or for meeting with what are considered to be rape apologists and misogynists, when really she'd met with people that had been accused of rape and some MRAs. And yes, I know that tag is enough to set the liberal media terrorist alert off. Nice job trying to character assassinate the person trying to fix the damage done by the previous administration's abuse of power. The truth is that the system established by the prior administration has failed too many students. There must be a better way forward. Every survivor of se sexual misconduct must be taken seriously. Every student accused of sexual misconduct must know that guilt is not predetermined. Those are taken from the DeVos statement on Title IX and college campuses. It is worth talking about briefly the reaction to it. There were many protests, and I kind of understand where they're coming from. They believe that by revising the guidelines, that it will be harder to convict someone that has in fact committed a rape. But, because, as she stated, the system is broken on both sides, it was in the past too simple to simply designate someone a rapist, causing irreparable damage to their futures. That is not her justifying or protecting potential rapists, it is ensuring the system is fair. While I'm not a big fan of blaming people for anything, I do believe that the Obama administration has to take responsibility for this in the first place, whether it be because they did overreach with civil rights and that dear colleague letter was clearly a step too far, or because they peddled social justice viewpoints that were later found to be proven wrong. The colleges that have acted out should be punished. The students who have been hurt should sue and will undoubtedly win, costing the colleges or universities a lot of money, and rightly so. If a college is found guilty of violating Title IX, it should lose funding, it should be sanctioned, it should be punished, as a very clear and open statement to what these colleges have done, and hopefully, with changes to be made, a fair system can be introduced that prosecutes the right people and protects those that are innocent, i.e. genuine rape victims and those falsely accused. Thank you all for listening.